One day I was walking to class when suddenly the ground started shaking. And though many think sending radioactive material would cause a huge disturbance like this, this is honestly not the case. I actually found out that this exact scenario was happening at my university a few months ago. After hours and hours of research, one Google search, I discovered Triumph Labs were the ones sending out radioactive material underneath students' feet with something called the rabbit line. So I sent Triumph a very formal email, and because of how formal it was, they agreed to give me a tour. How did Triumph make this radioactive material? Is the rabbit line dangerous? What other technology does Triumph have? These were the questions I needed answers to. Getting ready to solve this mystery, I decided to bring very knowledgeable friends. So what are your pre-thoughts? Um, I hope I actually understand what they're talking about. I do know what Triumph Place is. It's a particle accelerating thing, but that's all I know about it. And out of nowhere, we were approached by Stu, an absolute legend and interim head of communications at Triumph Labs. Let's get going. Let's do this. He showed us lots of scientific equipment, like this fence the official entrance, and something to monitor our radiation levels. This is a pencil dosimeter, this is gonna monitor our radiation intake. This is also mine, a different kind of dosimeter. Both of these are just gonna make sure that uh, we know exactly how much radiation we're exposed to. A very small, negligible, probably zero amount. It's got an optical sort of viewport. Oh! Good oh, to wow, know that we're not going to walk like out with three arms. Just to let you know, this is a working site. As you see, we've got vehicles here. Just keep an eye on uh, your surroundings. And I, I put all my trust in you, man. <laughs> <laughs> to discover why radioactive material was being sent underneath our university, we went to Messon Hall, where we would find the machines that produce the radioactive isotopes. We start with hydrogen gas and we electrify it, so we add... Basically, they convert H2 gas into ions. Ions are accelerated with the cyclotron and carbon foil takes the electrons and now you have proton. And that proton is that beam that comes out of the cyclotron. Right behind me is the TR13 cyclotron. And this makes isotopes, the radioactive stuff, using a proton beam. But you may be asking, why do we need isotopes? Isotopes are really useful to us because they decay and when they do, they give off particles that we can detect. Behind you is a particle detector. This is one of the first PET scanners ever built on the West Coast. When we attach that isotope to that biomarker and we insert it into the body, that isotope as it decays is gonna give off particles that we can detect diagnostic tools for us to visualize disease and track it in the body. Here at Triumph, we also send some of these isotopes up to the UBC hospital via something called the rabbit line that transports a small glass vial that I think we call a pig. <laughs> it's for you. It's just the idea. <laughs> so afterwards, Stu showed us the many secret inner workings of Triumph. You're about to see fascinating technology, like the actual rabbit line, how we stand on the world's largest cyclotron, this detergent spray bottle, and many more. Little ground covers for the rabbit line is going under our feet right now. While we're walking on radiation. <laughs> definitely, definitely how it well, works, yeah. To be clear. I, I, I forget everything that he <laughs> just explained. That's to us. right here. That's crazy, rabbit crazy. Line. <laughs> Is there anywhere on campus where you can like find these things? Well, up until the UBC hospital, yeah. So, yeah. But look, there's a vending machine. Yes, we have lunchrooms. <laughs> We're here. Yo, the largest cyclotron. They're official. So this photo was taken in 1972. As you can see, there were different health and safety standards back then. <laughs> the Psychotron is actually sort of a tank, a vacuum tank, so it's got a lid that goes up and down, but almost the same vacuum as the International Space Station. Oh, you can go and stand on top of it again, but we can't go inside it. So we took a treacherous walk to stand on the world's largest cyclotron. I didn't know what to expect. Would I actually see the cyclotron? This is the cyclotron. This red line here, this is the circumference of the cyclotron. The answer was kinda. Below us is sort of the roof, the ceiling of the cyclotron. We're standing kinda here. We're like on the top right now. Can't see the little model. They are actually colored those same colors. They were painted in the 70s when pastels were really big. Wow, it's aesthetic. It's visually aesthetic. The workers work in, do they wear like hazmat suits and like... Uh, we call them rabbit suits or bunny suits. Why it's so rabbit themed here? <laughs> That's not a question I can't answer. I don't know. I don't know why. So just around this corner is the main control room. You can get a look at it from here. This is where we control the cyclotron and uh, the 
wide variety of there too. Oh yeah. I'm like that tiny computer runs the whole city. <laughs> 30 to 40,000 devices, sort of manipulation technologies that control the cyclotron itself and make sure that it's running smoothly and safely. So we've got folks in the driver control room at all times, 24-7, 365. So Very secure. Yo, no way! There's a whole library of beams that you can produce here at Triumph. So we create beams of rare isotopes. At places like Dragon, we're using beams of rare isotopes to investigate the fundamental principles and the nature of the universe. Here at Dragon, what we're investigating is the reactions that occur in stellar events, so star mergers and explosions, and how those events create the isotopes and the elements, how much carbon there is in the universe, or nitrogen, or oxygen. It's a plant. Yeah, oh, this is a nice pot. <laughs> wow, the coolest thing here. Some more little models here. Wow. of an x-ray camera at the dentist is kind of like a camera, but it uses x-rays. This is a gamma ray camera. What's that center ball supposed to do? That ball is where the isotopes are implanted. It's allowing us to see how they're decaying. As that isotope decays, it gives off gamma rays. When that happens in the center of Griffin, we can capture all of the gamma rays coming out uh, of an element. I learned a lot. I have like so much knowledge in this brain. Right <laughs> Especially since we had nothing during winter break. <laughs> if you want to come by again, just let me know. Thank you again, Stu. Yeah, of course. Thanks for your time. Wait, I'm so like, I know so much now. Dude is actually kind of legend. Dude is so nice. really nice. And I think mm -hmm. kind of dumbed it down for us, for us to understand. <laughs> So that was pretty cool. Radioactive stuff. I'm not like growing hands or anything. Like, oh, Brandon, there's something wrong with me. Woo! And it'd be flying away. <laughs> <laughs> what do we rate the experience and the tour out of 10? Because Stu was such a kind man, I know he's watching this, so I'm not pressured at all to rate it good. But <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a 9 out of 10. 10 out of 10. I also agree with the edge in. Tour. You know, I should say 10 out of 10 now. <laughs> oh, it, yeah. it's a 10 not you changing. Ten. It's a 10 out of 10. <laughs> It's been a few months since I filmed the Triumph Labs video and I think what really stood out to me was the fact that like so many students, including myself, didn't even know that radioactive material was shooting underground. Do you know what the rabbit line is? No, I don't. <laughs> no idea. The rabbit line. No. I think I just realized how easy it really was to miss out on the cool things around us. So I guess take the time to explore your normal surroundings. Like who knows what you're missing out on. Maybe you'll also find another nuclear particle accelerator.